Hi everyone, Ashley here for Scrap -a -a Crafts, and this is our second recipe swap album. There's uh, going to be four, and then the box that will house it, which I'll be starting on that here shortly, the box part. Um, so this is our second one. This is our spring album. We did the um, winter slash kind of holiday, Christmas holiday album, which was this one. This one's missing its cards. But it still has the stickers and stuff. Um, so we did this one, and they all have a charm on the side, and so they'll sit in the box like so. And the charm kind of denotes maybe what the um, album is. Kind of. Not really, but kind of. Like that one is Christmas, so. Um, this one is our kind of springish kit. And um, it's using. So you're going to get a kit. And it's going to have two of everything, of all of these papers, except for the sticker sheet. It has one of those. And then it has got 16, I think, if I remember correctly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so I'll have 16. I have a, a set of eight to the side already. Uh, 16 recipe cards. It's going to come with your Brad's, and there's a Tim Holtz um, almost jump ring Brad holder. Oh, that's not a great description there, but um, it's going to come with that. And then it also, I don't know if this was an accident, but it has these two things in there. I mean, I'm going to have to work with my autofocus in and out, okay? Because it does not. Okay. It'll also come with a charm. You either got a spatula or a spoon. That's what I got. Okay. And then you've got your brads. There should be 16 brads. In each book there are eight pages. And you, you have eight. There's actually nine members to a group. But you're swapping with eight other people. So, and you're swapping two, um, two recipes. So, you'll get two of these plain cardstock pages and then two of the following pattern pages which this one is authentic the wood connection two of these this is authentic um, homestead collection authentic homestead collection and this is one that I'm using for the front and back cover Authentic Homestead Collection. So you get two of each of these. I like the. I keep wanting to call it gingham. <laughs> this is the Homestead Collection as well, and it's got some um, little itty bitty roses. Let's see. We can focus on that, kind of. Not too bad. I actually didn't end up using this in my album, but you can certainly use it in yours. Uh, this one is authentic. The wood co connection. A nice blue. There's a stripe. Pretty subtle. Another uh, wood connection paper. This side and then this side. So the papers go really well with each other. There's two pieces of chipboard. Two of these cardstock, 12 by 12s. Again, you get the sticker sheet. 16 of the recipe cards. You also get eight of these clear simple stories pages. You get eight of these. I already have my stuff already set up and inked and put in here. And um, so there's that. Any questions about what the kit looks like? I'm gonna set this one aside and we're gonna pull out what I have already done. Now, what is great about this kit is that when I was doing the legwork for getting everything prepped, I specifically left one of everything still available. So, when you get this kit, if you, when you order it, or whatever the case is, and you get this kit, if you order an extra set of the recipe cards, um, an extra set of the brads, 
and a charm, a random charm if you want, or if you have a charm at home, whatever you want to do. An extra set of the pocket pages. There are enough, exactly enough pages and or papers. There are exactly enough papers, um, including the cardstock, the plain cardstock, and the sheet of chipboard to make a second album. So you're going to have exactly enough left over to make a second album. You'll just have to invest in the other little bits and bobs like the cards, the, pa the pocket pages, the brads, and a charm. But everything else you have enough of. So just wanted to put that out there for you. Okay, any questions before we get going? Yeah, one for me, one for you. You can make one for you and send one as a gift to a friend. That would be super cute. Okay. So, let's go ahead. And I have got everything that I'm going to need right here. We will still be making, I'm going to be making a lot of this along with you. I'll be able to just fast forward as far as the inking, the edges, and the tape goes. So don't worry, I'm still going to be cutting and folding all of this and, and doing it with you. Um, so we're going to go over a couple things. Just trying to speed it up. Actually, we'll just probably start the album. Okay. I'm going to set these aside. So I do have my recipe cards in here. And I have chose to do one recipe card on the front and then what will happen is I'm going to put card stock on the back. So if you're a recipe swapper, you're in the swap, you would do like one on the front and one on the back. Okay. Now this is where I actually run out of paper and have to cut into one of my second sheets is on these last two cards here. So there's almost a perfect amount to do a second kit if you're doing it the way I'm doing it. Otherwise, if you're a recipe swapper, you're putting a recipe card here and a recipe card on the back. And you don't even need to cut this paper, which means you have exactly two for, or you, you have enough to make exactly two if you buy the additional little pages and whatnots. Okay? So, just to put that out there, I'm not swapping in a group, so Mine look a little bit different. I'm going to put the recipe card in front and then on the back where I have like stickers like this in the Christmas one, I would have like the pattern paper here on the back and the recipe card on the front. And then I put the stickers on the backs of these, these pages. That way I could maybe put a picture of the recipe when it was done or what, whatever might be the case. So it works both ways either for swappering with the recipe cards or if you're not in a swap group but you want to make the album you can do it that way as well so you have a few options <laughs> so let's go ahead and we're going to start with our chipboard and I'm going to actually cut one as well so here's our chipboard your chipboard front and back cover is going to be seven and a quarter wide and then you're going to have two, at so one here and one here at four and a half tall. So I'm going to cut these really quick because I am actually going to be making an album. <laughs> a second one. I won't be doing any of the taping or inking today. So you need two pieces that are seven and a quarter wide by four and a half tall. And one piece, which is your spine piece, that is two inches wide by four and a half tall. So it's going to look like this. So out of this kit, 
I've just done the chipboard twice. Okay, I'll set one of these aside, but just so you can see it cut, there we go. And then as we cut, I'm going to be piling things up because I'll be making two of these. Because I can. Okay. So for our front and back cover, I chose... These pieces here, um, so this is technically our front cover here, and this one will be our back. I liked this one because um, the recipe card was nicely in the middle. You can put some of the stickers from the embellishment around that, and you can actually write on this recipe card, you know, whoever whoever this book belongs to or whatever the case may be. So this is our front, and this one's our back. Let me find that paper so I can give you the name of that paper since I have an extra one. It is this one. It is the Collection Homestead, and it's called Secret. So you're going to need to cut two of these, and I'll show you how I cut these. Because I kind of, you kind of want to center it. So, your front and back cardstock cover, which is what these are, are going to measure seven and three quarters wide by five and a half tall. Okay. I'm going to cut my, here was the top of the paper, so I'm going to cut that at five and a half. Okay. And then I do about an inch from the end of this card. So here's that card, so cut about an inch. And then I measure my seven and three quarters wide for to cut off the rest. Okay, so here's our front cover piece, just like so. You can put your scraps in your pile and use them for later if you like. And then kind of the same thing with the back. Um, but with this back one, let me see here. How did I discover this? It was... You want to cut an inch from this side of the recipe card. That's what it was. An inch from this side of the recipe card. So if you're looking at it as if you would read it, you would cut an inch from the, the side of this recipe card on the left. Okay. It's hard to explain that. Okay. And then I'm going to cut a little bit because I want this kind of centered. So I'm going to cut my height, which is five and a half. scraps over there and then now I'll cut my actual width of the paper which is seven and three quarters okay which I'm going to actually use this one for this particular album even though it's not taped because I messed up on this one as you can see when I go to put this on the back page this would be the back page the wrap around for the spine is going to hit this recipe card and I don't want it to do that I want it to be more centered in between the spine and the edge there, just like so. So this is available to write on as well. Okay? So I kind of messed up on that, but that's all right. I'm going to keep this one with my actual kit, and we'll set this one aside with its chipboard covers so I can make another one. Okay? Any questions so far? Kind of moving right along here. So we've got our chipboard, our paper for our front and back cover. Let's go ahead and do our spine covers. So for the outside of this spine, I chose this blue with the simple um, stripe down it. We're trying to keep them pretty neutral colored, not like hot pink or, you know, crazy and not a lot of design on the spine, so when they're sitting in the box, they look maybe like they belong together. So for your outside spine cover, I did use the blue stripe, and 
The outside spine cover is going to be four and a half wide by five and a half tall. Okay, your inside spine cover is going to be four and a half wide, which we have it already cut by four and a quarter tall. This measurement is slightly different from the last one we made, but it works exactly the same way. It's just a little bit wider, and I do that to make sure that these line up, but you can't actually see it, so it doesn't actually matter. So if you have the measurements written down from the last one, just go by those. It's, the width on this does not affect how it all comes together. It's just me in my brain trying to figure stuff out. <laughs> so that first one, which was four and a half wide, five and a half tall, okay, that's your outside spine cover. Which is this one. And then this one, which is four and a half wide by four and a quarter tall, is your inside spine cover. Okay. So we can set these aside. So that's all the paper for the outside and inside spine and outside cover. So for our inside cover to our pages, I chose this paper right here. Okay. Let me find it in my stack. It is the Authentique uh, Homestead Traditional. Okay. Inside front and back cardstock covers are going to measure seven and a quarter wide by four and a quarter tall. And this is another measurement that's slightly different from the first one. The first one was seven and an eighth wide by four and a quarter tall. It's just an eighth measurement. It does not matter. I'm putting it at seven and a quarter. I think it's going to look a little bit better. Okay. I knew you'd love this plaid, Teresa. You and your yellow. <laughs> so here's our seven and a quarter wide. Now we need two of these at four and a quarter tall. So four and a quarter. Four and a quarter. These are scratched. You can set these aside. Okay. So now these are the covers of the inside of our of our album. This piece right here. See this green polka dot paper? That's what these pages will represent. Okay? So you can set those aside. I have mine already inked and taped. Okay, so that would be all the paper to do the outside and the inside of your album. Okay? The only other paper that you're going to need to pre cut is going to be your policy envelope which is at the back of your album. It sits right here. You can tuck little tags, little mementos, whatever you want to tuck into them. Okay, right in here. So your cut for this is going to be um, eight and a quarter wide by eight and a quarter tall. So I have this cut and I'm going to actually start with this one with the scoring and then we're going to get back to a little bit more cutting. So let me grab my scoreboard. Okay. So your first set of scores, if I can get my score thingy, <laughs> are going to be at two and six. Score at two, score at six. Rotate one time. Okay. And then you're going to score at half of an inch. and then seven and a quarter. Okay. So those are all your scores. And we'll go over how to make this in a minute, but I just wanted to score that while we had it and since it was cut, okay? So that can go over here in our pile to be finished. So let's go ahead and grab your cardstock piece that came with the kit. And you guys are gonna be cutting your Hinges. Okay, mine already are punched and they're taped and already stacked. So let's go ahead and grab our cardstock. And I actually have enough left over from the first initial cut that I am not going to cut into a new sheet. I'm just going to find the old sheet. 
Okay. So we'll pretend like it's 12 by 12 because it's not really, you can do two of these out of here. So you're going to cut, you're going to measure it four and a quarter, make one cut, pull the rest of that out. You're only going to be working with this. Okay. You're going to rotate it. Your first cut is going to be at three and a quarter. Then two and three quarters, and then two and a quarter, and then one and three quarters. As you can tell, we went down by a half inch every time on the width. Okay, so you now have these four pieces. What you're going to do now is grab your scoreboard. And these need to have seven and a, or seven and a quarter, <laughs> three and a quarter inch, three quarter inch, there we go, hinges on either side. So you can just mark on your thing where your three quarter inch mark is, one this side and one on this side. And you're scoring along the four and a quarter length. Okay, so this needs to be, this direction needs to be four and a quarter you know, tall. So here's our four and a quarter height right here. Okay. And just, and you, it's three quarters of an inch on every single one. So you just do one side, flip it and do the other. Okay. All of them. Score. 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 And score. Okay, so now we have our things cut and scored and then we're going to be putting tape on and, and hole punching and stuff like that. Um, if you have a scrap piece of paper, you will need like just a scrap. It doesn't need, this is a scrap from the collection. It's this card stock actually. If you cut it to um, four and a quarter tall and then just a little like tiniest of a skosh underneath three quarters of an inch wide. You'll need this for later and we'll go over that just so you know. I'm going to be using this is a template of sorts right here. So, okay, so we've got our hinge system cut and scored. Now we're going to get our, these are our page wraps with the brads to make it look pretty. So it is these red pieces here that they wrap to the front and they go around the back. So we're going to cut these. You need six of them. Okay. These are three quarter. No. <laughs> yes, they are three quarters of an inch wide and then six inches tall. Okay. Is that right? Yeah. Mine's playing tricks on me. I swear to goodness. So I'm using the rest of this um, blue paper that we cut from the wood collection. This is your spine cover, but we're actually going to be, the side that's going to be showing is this other patterned blue. That is what we'll be showing. So on the spine on the, is the stripe and on this back side is this pattern and that's the side that you guys will see in the album. So let's go ahead and cut it at six wide. over there. And then you're going to be making six of these at three quarters of an inch tall. And I'm just going to check that measurement. I wrote it down that way. For some reason it's screaming that it's not. Nope, it is. So you need three, or you need six, uh, you need eight, I'm sorry. You need eight three quarter inch wide by six inch tall strips. Yeah, Spit that out. There's two because we have eight pages and you need one for each page. Four, five, six, hold on, seven, six, seven, and 
Okay. And then scraps put it to the side. Well, I'll be showing you guys how to do these on these. We'll do one or two of them in class, as well as this. So I'm just going to set this aside. Okay, so I think that that is everything that we need to cut. Um, so we can go ahead and start building. So all of your stuff would be cut by now, or you're writing down measurements, one of the two. Any questions before we go any further? Okay, so let's grab our pieces of paper. We're gonna, I'm going to start building the album right now at this point. Um, I've gone over the measurements for everything that you're going to need so far, and so you'll see me build it. Um, I need to put some tape on this one real fast. And I'm out of half-inch score tape, so I'm making up my half-inch score tape out of quarter-inch score tape. For this album, I used frayed burlap. It's, um, it's not... Uh, it covers the white edges, but it is not obtrusive. You can barely see it, and no, I actually don't need to do that to this. Um, you can barely see it and notice it. So, frayed burlap is what I'm using. I didn't want to use a red because the red inked on the blue looks kind of weird, in my opinion, and then the red inked on something else looks so. To choose an actual color it would have to be a dominant color for me in the album, and there's really not. There's a lot of whites and yellows and blues and reds and, and tans going on, and they all seem to mesh really well, but to choose a color because it's not the dominant color, I can't do that. So I'm just going to go with a neutral color, and frayed burlap does that for me. So if you guys watched my um, show on Sunday, we kind of did a tips and tricks kind of basic mini album building kind of thing. That's what it ended That wasn't planned. That's just what it ended up being. <laughs> So, um, in that tips and trick, I tell you why I put what where and how I do this. And uh, one of the tips was to always put tape on your top and bottom first. There was reasons for that. So you could definitely, it's on YouTube and it's also on my Ustream channel. So if you haven't seen it, you know, I would say to maybe go and take a look at it. I post the link in chat. Uh, if you're new to album building, it's just kind of over the last few years things that I have found that make it easier for me. But I am a score tape lover and most of my measurements are based around half inch score tape. I literally cut my albums to, do, to go around that. So <sighs> that's why. I am making my own half inch score tape with my quarter inch because I'm out of half inch. <laughs> so. I wasn't about to change the measurements of this album just because of my score tape. So I need to be dedicated on my supplies of half inch score tape. I should probably just take up stock. It's probably the easiest way to do it. <laughs> so. these going. And this album is built roughly about the same kind of way that the album in that video was built um, ish. So let's see here. Okay, Let's burnish our tape down. All right, so that's my back piece. Here's my front piece. Okay, so this is the front piece. So if you're looking at the album, the recipe card will be closer to, if you're looking at the front of it, your recipe card will be closer to your right side. Okay, so the tape that we're going to remove and the reason we do this whole half inch around the edge is because that's how I wrap and it gives you a nice perimeter so we're going to remove everything that you cannot see with the chipboard okay so that means you're going to be removing this piece of tape here and then these three pieces okay it's the same with 
the back. You're removing, removing spine side tape and then the three metal pieces, okay? And you can use liquid glue, and if you don't have um, score tape, just set your chipboard in. You can create your half-inch lines with a ruler and a pencil, and then set your chipboard in. Um, I recommend doing that, because especially if you're using directional paper, because it really, if it is crooked, for some reason, if your album is crooked, your eye is drawn to it. And I don't know why, but it is, at least for me. Okay, so let's go ahead and burnish that down. So, and especially if you are using stuff that has writing on it and it is directional, make sure that it, <laughs> you're facing the right direction. That's why I like laying things out like this. So let's remove our middle tape here. Our spine side tape. And if you burnish, it should come up pretty easy. I have no nails though. So. Okay. And then you're going to put your chipboard in, but I'm right handed, so I turn it this way to do that. Okay. burnish. Okay. Now we're going to miter our corners with our perfect trim ruler. We also discussed this in the video. Like my favorite tool ever. So if you really want a good thorough explanation about how stuff works, visit that video. So I'm going to miter my corners, my front and back, just the corners. Okay. Sorry if my head got in the way there. I moved my camera up a little bit. I have a tendency to be off screen because I pull it towards me, but then I have a tendency to look over and my head blocks it. So it's kind of like, okay. <laughs> okay. Front and back. So now we're going to go ahead and wrap our corners, our pages. So if you start with the top, you automatically do the bottom. Always the opposite of whatever one you do. If you are wrapping for some reason left and right, you would, and you start with the left, you start with the left, then you have to do right next, okay? Always do the direct opposite of whatever side you're starting on. So I'm gonna do top. I say that every time, probably like a broken record, but hey, you never know. Might be someone new watching that doesn't know. Okay, I'm just going to roll it over nice and gently. You don't want to pull it over. You, you even in the best of papers, if you pull it over and you tug that tight, you can get cracking. But these authentic, authentic papers are awesome. I hardly ever have cracking with them. And so I'm super excited that we're using them, to be quite honest. So I'm doing the opposite side of the one I just did. that over. This is the pain in the, the keister part that I don't have my half inch. So now I have to pull two off of every one instead of just one. <laughs> you know, such frivolous. Now you're going to tuck your corners. Okay. And we're going to roll this up. Burnish it down. Okay. To 
Insta. You have a nicely evenly wrapped back cover with the recipe cord towards the side here because our our um, spine cover is going to come in about an inch so it's nice and kind of centered as a focus. And you're going to do the same to this side. Start at the top. Thanks, T. Burnish that down and then do the bottom. And then wrap it. Again, you don't need to pull it, just nicely bend it over the edge of your chipboard. I'm going to throw away some of the um, strips here. This one. There we go. I'm going to tuck my corners. So here's our front cover. Okay. So now we've got this going on. And what we're going to do now is grab our spine cover. Um, but first we're going to do a half inch at the top and a half inch at the bottom because that is going to allow you to set your chipboard piece in there quite nicely. Okay. So let's take our tape and with the four and a half width at the top, let me just make sure that's correct. Outside spine cover cardstock cover, yep. We're going to make and we're going to take and give ourselves a half inch score tape border. And if you start working with this perfect trim ruler and you really get good at it, when you go to tear your piece, if you run the edge of it up like that with a little bit of pressure, it kind of works as a burnishing kind of mechanism. So keep that in mind as well. So. Just going to line everything up just to make sure that I've got it properly lined up. Here we go. Okay. Here we go. So basically, what is going to happen is your chipboard cover is going to come in an inch from the edge of this blue piece, is where you're going to be taping it down. I'm going to be at adhering some one inch score tape on that blue piece there in a minute. Same with the front. Okay. Then there is a quarter inch in between all of these chipboard pieces. Gives you nice gussets so there's no tearing and cracking. Hopefully no tearing and cracking, I should say. So I'm going to take my spine piece and take my one inch score tape and cover the whole thing. And then I'm going to really burnish it down. This is a spine piece here, structurally. And I'm going to take my 
blue spine piece. Now the stripes need to be on the outside so the, uh, the stripes will be down, facing down, because you're working, this is the technical inside here. I'm gonna run a one inch strip of score tape here along this side and the same to the other side. Okay. So it's gonna help you line up your pages and get them all straight. It's very important to make sure your cuts are straight as well. Keep that in mind. If you have a wonky cut, it doesn't matter if your tape's straight or not, it's gonna go on wonky. Okay. So what I'm gonna do here is on my grid, I'm gonna line up the top edge and the bottom edge, or the top edge and then my left side. Okay. And I'm going to take my ruler and at one and a quarter inch in from this left side, I'm going to place my ruler with the grippy skids. Okay. Okay. Just like so. And then what I'm going to do is remove this burnished tape from the back of my spine piece. And because we have our top and bottom tape, it's going to line up height-wise perfectly. I moved it. I'm line it up on your grid. Go in an inch and a quarter. Press down with your grippy skids. You're going to take your chipboard piece in between your top tape and your bottom tape, press it right up against your ruler, and press down. Okay. I can pull this off. I kind of know that this is the spine cover now. <laughs> and we're going to burnish. Okay. Pretty easy. So next what we're going to do is remove one of our tapes. This is the this is the back side right here. So this is your back chipboard piece, which is this one, the one with the rolling pin if you're using the same papers. And again, you can take your ruler, go right over the top of your chipboard piece, just like so, a quarter inch over, you can see that, okay. Okay. Is going to allow you to get your chipboard piece lined up. This ruler is really, really kind of handy. This is probably one of my top 10 tools. I use it all the time because of its no skids. Make sure your page that is directionally facing the right way. Okay, set that down. So now our back page is adhered. We're all good, good to go. Let's do the same with the front. Make sure it is directionally facing the correct way. You can use the same uh, trick with your ruler just to help you. You can also use the edge of your tape if you can see it. However, on this dark page, I can't see it. So I'm going to use. Now our pages are adhered down. We're going to burnish. And if you want to get really fancy with it, you can, you know, give yourself a scallop border. There's an inch here, so you're really good if you do not a really big one, but a nice, you know, you can do a nice scallop border, some, some kind of decorative edge if you like. That's completely up to you. Okay. So let's go ahead and wrap our tops and bottoms, and then we're going to be making sure that we put in our Brad charm. Well, we can do that after, actually. Well, we'll do it before. Let's go ahead and move our bottom tape.
Nice and gently up and over. And then you're going to burnish. Okay. Got some crazy things going on right now. <laughs> Same with the top. Okay, so that is once we start folding, um, once we start folding everything. So but right now what we're going to do is we're going to take and it's, I'm going to make a mark at where the one inch mark of my spine is because it's two inches wide. Okay. And literally, that half of an inch down, right where you made that mark, is where you can. We're going to poke a hole for our charm to go in. It's actually the brad that holds the charm to go in. So, get your little packet out. It is this piece right here. Okay. So, I'm going to grab my pokey tool. Nobody seems to know the name of these. So all I know it as is a pokey tool. And poke right through just to get it started, and then I'll go from the front and poke this way. Don't stab yourself. Okay, just like so. So it's nice and centered. And take your brad right through the hole. Now these ones, I'm going to bunny ear them down instead of up and down how they would normally sit and how it only allows you to do is up and down. I'm going to bunny ear them down, which is kind of V'ing them upside down because if I were to go up with my brad, it would hang over the edge. You can also cut it off if it bugs you. So it looks like that. And I'm also going to put tape over it. Just a little piece of score tape. Just to hold them down. You can use your burnish tool to really put them down, but it's not. You need to V it so it's not a double thick brad, one sitting on top of each other, because that makes it even thicker. So if you put it through and then you V it, it lays more flat. Okay, you have less bulk, less bulk with the brad laying on top of each other. So now we have the brad, which are, is what our charm hangs on. But you have to put that in now because we're about to cover it up. <laughs> oh, sorry if you hear dogs barking. Someone is here. Okay. So basically, our spine covering paper is going to go right over the top of this, okay? With an eighth at the top left and an eighth at the bottom. And you're going to be lining up the edges of this with the edges of the blue piece that moves <laughs> around. That's great. That I'm scary. recording for Scrap It Out of Yeah. What's up? <laughs> she didn't know that I was recording for Scrap It Out With You. That was my stepdaughter, Anna, coming by to say hi and try to scare me. <laughs> so, I'm going to go ahead and put um, 
On the top of this, I'm going to put tape up here and down here, reasons for that. I'm going to put uh, one inch tape here, one inch tape here, and cover this as well, okay? So sorry if she scared people in chat. <laughs> I'm also going to actually, I'm going to put my one inch tape on the left and right sides. So here's my left and right side on the back side. <laughs> I'll put it on here. Oh, shoot. Dang it. Okay, you're supposed to put your a half inch score tape on the tops and the bottoms. I broke my own rule. Cheese and rice. Okay, hold on. <laughs> I broke my own rule, people. So I'm going to try and fix my rule breakage. Cut a little bit of score tape off there. Or the just the paper. I'll leave the score tape. Okay, so on the top and bottom, on the back side, of your spine covering piece. So here's this, the side we would see that lays on the inside of the book. Okay, flip it over. This is on the back side where we're going to put tape. So on the top and the bottom, you need to do your half inch there and your half inch there, and then run your side pieces. Okay. Grab my one inch, run it right here. That piece is ready. I'm going to in between on only on the chipboard. Do not put it on your cardstock, you will rip it. Right here on the spine piece, I'm gonna put some tape. You can use or you can use glue, whatever you want to use. A little bit of glue. Okay, I'm going to burnish all of this tape that we just put on. Okay, we're going to leave that tape on for right this second. Okay, what we're going to do is remove, so here's the top, here's the bottom. Remove your top tape, your half inch top tape up here, or whatever tape you ended up using, and only that. Okay. You're going to get your eighth of an inch at the top and your eighth of an inch at the bottom. And it's important that you have that eighth of an inch. It sets the tone for all the way around your album. There we go. Okay. Let me get my controls so I can zoom in so you guys can see how what is lined up and what is not. Okay. There we go. So these edges are lined up. There's my one eighth here at the top. The side is lined up. My one eighth at the bottom, and all the sides are lined up. Okay. So what you're going to do now is go in and remove all the remaining tape, and then you're going to be able to stick it down. This just allows you to not. It's it's a way to save yourself some stress while making albums. It's your safety net to do it this way. If you mess up, you're only fiddling with one piece of tape as opposed to a four by four inch square of tape. Okay, and you're gonna put it down. Burnish, just like so. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of some of these pieces. Any questions about 
anything that I have done so far in chat. Oops, I keep clicking on stuff. Go ahead and put them in chat now and I'll look up here in a second. Okay, so our next move is going to be to put down our inside front and back covers with one eighth of an inch top side and bottom okay just like so first we're going to fold up our album just so we can see where our spine actually creases and I'm not putting any pressure do not put any pressure on this maneuver here I'm just using it to help bend the paper or help manipulate the paper into the crease of your album okay nice and gently don't go too fast okay so this is the side of our album it'll look great next to the to the green okay so here's our front I love it and then our back I love the fact that there's recipe cards on the front and back you could totally put something there okay so on the front inside and back side we're going to stick these covers here. Now this paper does kind of go in almost to the crease so my initial cut for this when we did this today was at seven and a quarter wide by four and a quarter tall. The height needs to stay. The four and a quarter stays but you can take here you go T. You can take one eighth of an inch off. It, it makes it fit better so that is why it was one eighth in the last book it just was a little sitting a little different so I'm going to take an inch an inch off this width or not an inch I'm sorry one eighth of an inch off this width I'll re-ink it's just going to give it a nice the way it sits okay otherwise it's no big deal so I'll do that to both one eighth of an inch This is what one eighth of an inch looks like. If you can find the quarter inch on your, you know what a quarter inch is? Well, one eighth of an inch is half of that quarter inch. Okay? So that's what one eighth of an inch looks like. It's an easy measurement. Okay, and then we're going to put these down. I love this plaid. Just love it. Again, we're going to start with our just removing one side, okay? One side piece. So this is the only tape that you're working with. And once you have it stuck down, you'll be able to remove everything else as long as it's all nice and straight. And this really isn't directional, so you want to give yourself and if you look and you line up with your top and bottom to the blue inside cover here, that's where I would say line up to. There we go. Burnish that down so now we can remove the rest of the tape. Especially when you're working with stripes, you want to make sure your cuts are straight because if you cut something that has stripes on it, 
wrong and it's not straight, you are going to be able to tell. Just a little FYI on that one. <laughs> I learned that one the hard way. It's great. <laughs> um, if you also, if you wanted to, to have a kind of a different look to this, you could put your front and back covers on first and then put your spine piece that covers over it on next. However, you need to make sure that it's nice and glued down and this piece as well, like the whole thing, adhesive over the whole thing. Otherwise, when you bend your page, if this center piece is sitting on top of your, like say this was tucked underneath the blue one, which also looks great, if it is not adhered properly, you are going to get paper bowing. Okay? Just a little FYI right there. <laughs> Nobody wants any of that. All right. Yeah, bowing is the worst. So just remember, it's one of the reasons why I stick my front and back paper over the inside or over the top of the inside piece. I've done it both ways, but if you seriously, if you do not glue this entire thing down, you will get paper bowing. No matter how much space you give yourself, no matter how much you burnish, you need to glue, if you're doing it the opposite way, glue the whole thing down. Okay, so I've removed all of my tape, and now I'm just going to make sure it all lines up. Love it. Okay. Burnish it down. Okay, so now here's the inside. I just love how this looks. So awesome. Okay, so here's our front, our spine side where our charm will hang, our back and then the inside front and back cover. Okay? Any questions on any of that that we have done? We're going to go ahead and make our policy envelope now and put it down and then we're going to work on our hinges and hole punching and, and creating all of that. Okay? So this paper that we did earlier this is an eight, an eighth and a quarter by an eighth and a quarter. Okay, is that right? Yeah, eighth and a quarter by eighth and a quarter. It is scored at two and at six, rotated once, and then scored at oh here we go, scored at a half and scored at one inch. Okay. So you'll score at two and six, rotate once, score at a half inch, score at six, no, seven and a quarter. Oh, I did that wrong. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Score at two, score at six, rotate, score at half of an inch, score at seven and a quarter. There we go. Got it out. So, let's see. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to tell because this red in my computer are going to be spazzy. But right here, there's a little square in this corner. There's a square in this corner where your score lines intersect. Okay. You kind of see it there, this little square here. So, here's a score line. Here's a score line. You're going to be cutting that off all four corners. Okay. And I'm going to break out the best scissors in the world. I absolutely love these. But I'm going to be cutting to our center where they meet up. So this is one of the corners and here's the score line and here's the score line. So when they meet up at this intersecting point right here, I'm going to be cutting at an angle, just a slight one, to that intersecting point. Okay, you can see that. This is going to allow for your album or your envelope to fold properly. Okay. 
So you can tell that it's not perfectly straight and squared. It's, they're cut at an angle to that intersecting point. Okay, so we'll do it again. Here's our intersecting point. Come on, camera. There we go. Here's our intersecting point. Okay. So I'm going to get on this side of that. Cut like so. Doesn't need to be that dramatic, but I'm doing it in a weird position. Cut like so. And then, well, hopefully do it cleaner than that. There we go. I'm just going to make this side match. So it's going to bug me. Even though you can't see it, it's going to bug me. Okay. Then you're going to do the same with the top. Ex except on this top one. Well, yeah. No. On this top one, where there's the one inch here on this side, this is the one inch score line here. Because this is your bottom flap of a policy envelope, okay? This half inch here, the side where the one inch is. Just go ahead and cut straight in to where the lines intersect, like so. Okay, do the same over here, because we're going to round these corners. And if you cut them at an angle, it's going to be harder, clearly, to round them. This is part of the envelope. This is the flap of the envelope that would keep it closed, this little section right here. Okay, so this portion where there's this line, you're going to come in at an angle, just like we did at the bottom, to the intersecting point. This is going to allow everything to fold correctly without getting any bulging. Nobody likes any bulging. Okay. Okay. So we're going to fold this side in and burnish. This side in and burnish. Okay. You have about uh, a quarter of an inch there in the middle. You're going to fold your bottom up and over that half inch one and then you're going to take your corner rounder oh this one and I used the half of an inch I like that you can use the quarter quarter of an inch it's up to you around those corners and that will allow for your flap to fold over. Okay, so you're going to put tape here on this flap, and whatever flap ends up being the one that hangs over. So this one right here is going to get a quarter of an inch on it. So and you can do this for all policy envelopes, any size. Same principles apply. Okay. So there's our adhesion there. I'm going to put some tape down here. Pull that up. There we go. Okay, so now you have a really cool policy envelope. Okay. I really burnish this. I don't put anything, I'll end up probably putting a sticker on it. Um, what did we do in the last one? I put this one of the little tabs. It says Cheer and Love. And there's tabs in this collection. I haven't looked to see. Let's see here. There it is. Um, so we've got these tabs right here. It says family and tradition. They're the same size, so those tabs will probably be going on here. Okay. I'm going to ink the white edge of this flap because there's white showing. That's really all that needs to be inked. Okay. That, um, those, well, let's just put them on. All right, so let's ink the edges of the stickers. These are the family and tradition stickers from the sticker sheet. Okay. I'm going to put down 
tradition first. I'm just going to center it, or attempt to center it, I should say. Okay, so it says tradition, so it's hanging over and you can see the sticky there. But what you're going to end up doing is matching the family one back to back with that tradition one. Okay, and you can do family on this side and then when you open it it'll say tradition. So clearly I did them backwards, but this one says tradition and then family, family tradition. Okay. So what we're going to do now is flip our envelope over. Woo! It's getting blurry in here. Let's, I'm going to take off autofocus for right now because we won't need it for a hot second. So hold on. Let's take that off. There we go. Now on the back side of the envelope, I'm going to you would normally, most people would just put some tape on and glue it down. However, I like to use all my spaces. So what I'm going to do is use my 1 8 inch score tape. A lot of people like to use wet glue for this. And on the top and bottom, I'm going to run. I don't find issues with things sticking. Because I just think that for maybe a family secret recipe, this is a great little hidey hole in your album that maybe only you know about. You could just wad up your paper and stuck it down there. Burnish that tape on there. Now this is the end with the flap and there's no tape on this. So we're going to stick this down just like so, but because we didn't put any tape on it, it's going to allow for kind of like a hidden hidey hole pocket maybe, or something else behind it. Why not? So I'm going to remove this tape. Make sure that this is the, I put mine on the back inside chipboard piece. Okay. kind of centering it inside that yellow plaid paper. Hear that down and then remove the rest of that tape. So you kind of have your own little secret hidey hole pocket. Although you would make sure that it has some kind of piece of something sticking out so you can pull your whatever out of there. Your tag, or maybe there's a ribbon or something sticking out. Okay. Okay, so our pocket is on the back. We will use a piece of scrap um, towards the end to make a pocket on the front, just like the other one where you can tuck other things. Um, maybe you're going to make a few journal spots. Or maybe it's going to hold a recipe card. Although the recipe cards are quite, it would fit in there just fine. You could put an extra recipe card in it or whatever the case may be. Okay. So any questions on the policy envelope or what is that? Where I think that's what they're called. That's what I'm calling it. Okay. So what we're going to do now, we're going to set this aside and we're going to grab our four craft card stock hinge pieces that we cut earlier and we scored them. Okay. And what we're going to do is end up creasing our score lines. Okay. like so. Folding all of them in. I'll give you guys a refresher on the measurements for these. Um, so you're going to need a piece that is four and a quarter tall. These are all one strip that's four and a quarter tall. This one is four and a quarter, or this is three and a quarter wide by four and a quarter tall. 
scored at three quarters of an inch here, and then I rotated it and scored again at three quarters of an inch. Second one is two and three quarters wide by four and a quarter tall. Again, scored at three quarters of an inch. Rotate, score at three quarters of an inch. Third one. Let me fold these over. The third one is two and a quarter inches wide by four and a quarter inches tall, scored at three quarters of an inch, rotated and scored at three quarters of an inch. And then our last one is one and three quarters of an inch wide by four and a quarter inch tall. Okay, scored at three quarters of an inch, rotated, scored at uh, three quarters of an inch, okay. So what we're going to do now is on the back side of these, so these are hinges, so these are technically the top, which is what we use. So on the back side, we're going to be ad adhering some score tape. So put score tape and cover this back section because these are all going to stack and sit with inside each other with a quarter inch gusset separating each one just like so. Okay. And you're going to get something that looks like this. Ta-da! Like magic. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put tape on them and I will show you guys how to stack them really fast. And I'll show you how to punch and do the holes. Oh, just totally being a spaz. That's funny, Ash. Where is my bridge? You want to make sure that the whole back of these are nicely covered as well. These are what is holding your pages on. So take the extra effort to make sure they're nice and burnished and it's completely covered with tape. And then this one's a quarter inch. You can use liquid glue, however you like to do it. Basically what you're going to do is start with your biggest one first and uh, you know I suggest using your grid and putting your um, one of the score lines on one of the horizontal lines just to line it up because essentially what's going to happen is you're going to be able to have a, a quarter of an inch on this side and a quarter of an inch on this side so this piece is going to fit right in between there leaving you a nice quarter inch gusset on either side. It's best to just kind of fold it over if you can. Okay, and I'm going to eyeball it. Make sure your edges are lined up. That is very important. And it's nice and straight, okay? So right here, you can see that there's a nice quarter inch gusset in between this flap and this flap and then our front flap and our next flap. Okay, nice quarter inch gusset. So that's how it's gonna go for the rest of these. That's how you're going to do it. Okay, so now you're going to be setting your next size up or down or whatever in between the score lines of this one that you see here. Okay, with a quarter inch next to this score line and a quarter inch next to that one. So, 
take that score line that you see and line it up with one of your horizontal lines on your mat. Ole, go on, Papa. Mom doesn't need you to clean her floor. My little boy, Ole, likes to come in here and lick the papers off my floor and eat them. There was a bunch of sequins one time, the little ones, and so he had sequin poop for a while. <laughs> okay, again, you've got nice quarter-inch gussets in between each one of these. Super easy. So now you're going to take these two score lines that are on this one right here, and those will be your guides. So you're going to line up this bottom score line with one of your horizontal lines on your mat and one of your vertical lines. Okay, and you'll be taking your next one and a quarter inch in from that score line you'll be lining this one up. Okay. That one I got slightly crooked. I'm just going to gently pull. I did get this one just a little crooked. I didn't burnish it down, so. All right. And, you know, if you're worried about it, you can always just remove a little bit of the score tape, get that stuck down, and then remove the rest. So now we have got all of our hinges with all of our quarter inch gaps in between them. Okay. So we've got our eight hinges. Okay, so the next part, what you're going to do here is you're going to create a template. I took a piece of scrap um, that was left over, and on it, I took, I'll just do this with you so you guys can see. I took one of the pages, because you can see it has the holes, okay, make sure the top is at the top. You're going to grab, oh, let me find it. It's going to be three quarters of an inch wide um, by four and a quarter inch tall, I believe. Yeah, four and a quarter inch tall. I can't remember every measurement. Sometimes you have to go back and measure. Okay. So you have this piece, all right? Best thing to do is lay your piece down. On one side, or here on the bottom of it, right spine. This is very important, okay? And then on the back side, right here where it says spine, on this side, you would write it on the same, but on the back, okay? okay. So no matter how you flip it, this is still staying spine side. As you can see the word spine. Okay. Now you're going to turn it because our, our hinges, they're going vertical. Okay. This is how they sit in the book. They go vertical just like so. Okay. So turn it. Take your page and what you're going to want to do is line up. There's a sewing seam. There's one here. Let me turn on the autofocus. Hold on. Autofocus. Here we go. Okay. There is a sewing seam here, which would be the closest to your spine, and a sewing seam here. What you're going to do is line up that second sewing seam right at the edge of your cardstock piece. Here's the spine side. Okay. So you're going to take it, line it up top and bottom, so everything is lined up. This is basically a mimic of 
this this plastic piece, okay? Let me take off. Uh, it's okay. And the holes are already there and they're already punched. So what you're gonna do is take a pencil and draw through those holes. Okay. So now I've created a template of sorts. Okay. And I'm gonna put T for top and B for bottom. This is the top of my album, this is the bottom. Okay. I'm gonna take off the focus. Um, hold on. Auto focus off. Clarity. Okay. Take a hole punch and punch these holes out. Okay. All right. So now we have our piece. Okay. So you're going to take and line it up with this outside edge of this hinge and at the top and bottom and draw your circle. Okay, and you're going to go to the next hinge. We'll put it right there at the very edge of that hinge. Draw your circle. You're going to do that to all of your hinges. Okay, let's do one more. There. And then you can also kind of just look at it and you can see your your half marks of a circle and you can tell that they're all lined up. So let me autofocus here again. There we go. And it doesn't want to focus. Hold on, I'll do it myself. I don't want to do a camera on will force you to do it. Okay. So there's the holes drawn on there. Okay. What you're going to do, because now you have your template that you did all of these holes with that said spine side, and this is very important because as you can tell, these holes are closer to this edge, the, the, the top edge of what would be your hinge. They don't sit closer to the spine side. Is just flip this over like this. And now you're measuring on this side, where, and this says spine side right here. Okay. Now you're going to draw your circles here. Okay. It's very important that you do that. Otherwise, you're going to have wonky holes because those holes don't sit perfectly centered widthwise the, of, of the three quarters of an inch. So make sure that that is something that you do. We're going to draw our holes. Make sure that it's lined up at the top and the bottom as well. Okay. And then one more. Okay, and now all of your holes will line up with each other, which means your pages should be straight. <laughs> okay, so now what you're going to do is just like with this one, you're going to take your punch and you're going to go and you're going to punch these holes out, just like so. Okay, you're going to do that to all of them. I'm not going to sit here and do that because I have it done. So here's all of your holes. And I'm not going to put this in the book. We're going to do that actually last. It's one of the things that we're going to do last. So I've got all of my holes punched, and this is ready to go. So I would say you could just put these in with the brads, but we don't do that. We have our blue strips, which we cut. Okay. So I would say, let's see here. Let's grab our scoring tool and all of our blue strips that we cut earlier. These are three, just 
did I say just under three quarters of an inch? Anyways, they're three quarters of an inch wide by six inches tall, okay? And we're using this pattern to show. So when we put it down in the blade, the, the, or down in the, tr um, the score board, you should see the striped side, okay, if you're using the same one. So let's grab our scoreboard, set that aside, put it six inch across the top, and you're going to score at seven eighths of an inch, which is the mark right before the one inch score, okay. It's right here. It's the mark right before the one inch. You're going to do that to both ends of this six inch thing. So the best way to do it is to just score at seven eighths, rotate, score again at seven eighths. Now you don't have to be like counting backwards or whatever. Okay. So now when you fold these, they fold in just like that. Okay. These little tabs. So you're going to do that to all eight of them. Okay. I'm not going to because I have them ready. I'll do one more. Stripe side up, score at seven eighths of an inch in, rotate, score at seven eighths of, eighths of an inch in. Okay. And then, okay. You're going to also want to ink this if you're inking. Okay. So I'm going to set these aside, except for one, because I'm going to show you how we're going to get the initial holes. Okay. So we'll pretend like we did all of those. And what we're going to do is take one of these strips and take our template that we made and we're going to lay it on there just like this. So you can see it's, gonna, it's the same just like that. Okay, here's the spine side. So if this was in here, it's kind of a tight squeeze, but you get the gist. Okay. So you're going to lay this right over the top and what you're going to do, make sure you're, it's all lined up, is trace these holes. Okay. You're only going to do this to one because you're going to make yourself a template again. So you're going to trace those holes, open it up, punch these holes, One thing that I have found is if you put all your tape on first, this punching is actually a lot easier. So you get your, you have your holes punched now, okay? So what you're going to do is now take all of your pieces and draw on your circles using this one that we just punched as a template. So you're going to draw all your circles on, line everything up just like you did before, draw your circles on. That way everything lines up, okay? Um, if you want, before you punch the holes, if you want, we'll pretend that, here, let's, let's draw our template on. Okay. So I don't know if you guys can see that pencil mark. It's right here. It's closer to this side. So this means it, it, this is the spine side. Okay. But what you're going to do is on the spine side is take some tape and run it along the inside here. And this is just how we did it the last time as well. Okay. So there's some tape there. So here's, here's where your holes would be right here and here. Here's where the page comes out. This is the spine side. You can see that tape. Okay. And then these little flaps, I also take and put a little tape on. You can use wet glue when you're ready to do it. But this is when you guys see mine, you'll be like, wait, where did that step come in? If you're using tape, you can do this. If you're using wet glue, you do it one at a time. So here's the two little flaps. I put a little tape there. It doesn't really matter. A little tape here. This is the spine side, a little tape. Now, I, you, if you do your tape first and then you go through and you find your circle that you drew and you punch it, it punches nice and clean for some reason. 
and punch it. Okay, so that's gonna how that's how that is going to wrap around your page and line up with your holes for your recipe thing. Hold on. Oh yeah, okay. I'm just looking at it going, um, wait. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna take my piece that I have ready, and I already have all of these hinges ready, so I'm gonna try and zoom in and so you guys can see how this all goes together, okay? So what you're gonna do is get your brads, Oh yeah, you guys will be pros by the fourth album. Okay, take your first page. Okay, and if you want, and it'll help you to hold things on a little bit better, you can run some tape along the plastic part as well. If you want, it's kind of up to you. like just use a small amount you don't need it's just you don't even need to use that much you can just use some tape just to hold it on okay so here's your hinge here's the top of your album the bottom of your album okay and take your holes and remove that piece of tape here's our first hinge you set it behind it line up your holes Make sure your page is not wonky. Okay. Oh, this is our first page. And what you're going to do is remove the tape off of, take one of your things, remove the tape off of one of your little tabs. Line up your holes. Okay. Put in a brad. Hi, Carrie. Okay. And there's the tab in the first brad. Now it wraps around the back side. And these get quite snug, so you might have to do just a little bit of pulling or maneuvering. Don't pull too hard, you don't want to rip your paper. Okay, and you're going to wrap it around. First, remove your tape. So that's glued down, but we need to put in our brad before you remove the other strip of tape that's sitting here, which we'll get to that. This is where it becomes tricky, okay? Because you just have a little bit of a gap to work with, and you got to spread the prongs of the brad. So I take my pokey tool, and you can pull down one of the sides of the brad. You just kind of have to stick your finger in there and press it down. Like so. Oh, my fingers are in the way. Hold on, let me zoom in. Okay, you can see it laying down in there. Just like so. Okay, that's all you have to do. Okay, and then on this side, just to hold it level and nice and straight at the very spine side of this is your piece of tape okay. 
and just get in there and scoop it right out just like so and then press okay and there's our first page sorry that was blurry hold on there we go so there's our first page you just get in there and scoop that piece of tape out and then it's fine page one and then you do this eight times well seven more so I'm gonna keep doing this I have everything all prepped and ready so just I'm gonna grab and go if you have questions feel free to put them in um, caps I'm just gonna use a little bit of a tape to hold it down nothing big there. Oops, wrong side. Okay, so second hinge, stick this behind it. And you're going to line it up. Sometimes you might find that your holes don't perfectly line up, but that's okay. As long as you have a big enough hole to stick those prongs through, you're good. You're all good. Like these ones don't quite line up, but it doesn't really matter. There's a hole there for me to stick this prong through for the bread. I think these are called brad setters, to be completely honest, because that's what they're for. <laughs> hey, Galena. Okay. Do the same with this other side. Oh, for Pete's sake. <laughs> and then press that. I just removed that bottom spine side tape. So we have our second one. There's our first one. And our second one. Okay. Let's keep going.
Okay. Yeah, this is literally the hardest part and it's not, it's just getting in there and getting these small pieces. And that spine tape is a pain in the keister, but you need it. Keeps it nice and finished. But you know, I'm working on my fourth one, so it's not super bad. I'm just putting a little piece of tape helps hold it in place until I need it. Well, by the time you guys do this the fourth time, and I have to do this eight times, so there's that. <laughs> so after we do this the fourth time, because I have to, I'm making a full set to show the complete project before it's actually completed. I will be doing it with different paper lines, but just so you guys can see the box and how it's going to work. And I think I've already done it, what, one, two, three, this is my fourth. I did the initial test one before I even did the sample for the class, and then I did the one in class, and I'm doing this one. But wouldn't you know, I've lost the instructions every single time. And I was like, well, I can go back and watch the video, but I didn't need to. I just measured the other one. <laughs> but now I have them written. They are in my spiral notebook, and it's all good. I'm so horrible about it. I just grab a piece of scrap paper and literally write. Okay, halfway done. Not too bad. We're at um, an hour and 45 minutes. And granted, I had some of this prep, but some of it I, I recut with you guys. So. You know, it doesn't take very long to cut once you have the measurements, so. They are just adorable and they totally match the collection. And, you know, sometimes if your holes don't line up, it's okay. Like I said before. You don't want to be too far off, though, because your brad's got to sit over it.
You don't want part of your stuff showing. Nobody wants their stuff showing. Also on that note about stuff showing, you want to make sure you get your brad nice and tight and properly lined up over the holes because if they're not and your hole's not completely lined up, which doesn't have to be, as long as your brad is tight, you will get gap. And I will show you what gap looks like and what I'm talking about. Okay, here's gap. This bugs me. Hold on. There's gap. Right there. Where it's not completely covered the punch hole. And it's just because the holes are big. So just get in there and press it down and make sure your brad's nice and tight and then you won't get gap. Nobody wants no gap. <laughs> So get those brads lined up and press nice and tight and you'll be you'll be good. She'd rather have a gap than a bulge. <laughs> we were talking about bulging earlier with your spine. Okay. So a few more. Oh, sorry, it's blurry. Hold on. Oh. I have got to get a different camera. This whole autofocus nonsense is driving me nuts. Of this. We've only got a couple more to go. This is literally the most intense drawn out portion of this whole thing. It's literally this. in this brown. I go. 
these ones don't have this paper on it yet because I have to, I'm going to take some scrap from the other kit to do it. So, but if you're just using recipe cards, you don't have to worry about this, and you have enough to make another kit. I'm going to have to let's see here. Okay. right here. And these recipe cards are four by six. Actually they're six wide, four tall, but either way, four by six. I gotta stand up for a second. <laughs> and try and stand up and do this. Sorry if my head was in the way. Just very likely thing. Oh, for Pete. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, I didn't even do it in the hinge. There's no gap, and whoa, press. I'm just pressing these brads down so there's no gap and they don't move. Last one. There's no gap. Really press. And one more. Sorry, I'm so quiet. I'm concentrating. That's what's happening. I Skyped with my girlfriends last night. <laughs> they got to see my dance routine. <laughs> Is the hardest this last one. Here's 
some reason. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Adele's hello song was involved at one point. They... As a matter of fact, my costume is still on the floor. There was an umbrella. Looks like I was Rihanna. Okay. All right. All of our pages are on. And uh, there we go. Perfect. So now I'm going to clean up some of this tape real fast. Um, keep your templates. Those are always good to have, especially since if you're doing more of these albums. I'm going to clean up some of my, and then we're going to adhere this down and then make a pocket and throw on some embellishment and it will be done. Are there any questions about any of those steps that I just did that I can answer for you? All of this other stuff that I'm keeping, like these from my other one. And these recipe cards. Smoothie dash. <laughs> dropped everything on the floor. Went to sweep it into the garbage and dropped it on the floor. <laughs> okay. As long as there's no doubt about what people need to do, we can move on. <laughs> okay. So what you're going to be doing now is essentially removing the tape off the back of your and setting it right, right in here. Okay. You're going to have about a quarter of an inch at the front and at the back. And it'll line up the top, the top and bottom of this will line up with the top and bottom edges of that blue cover. Okay? So you can keep it, you know, straight. I'll make sure that's my front. Yeah. And then we'll burnish it down. I'm going to have to somewhat pull this close to me so I can see. And Carol will move this to the scrap a dab -a YouTube. scrap a dab -a YouTube. scrap a dab -a do YouTube. At some point. Okay. And you want to make sure it's straight, which this is, and then you're going to burnish. Really stick that down in between each of the gussets. There we go. Now you have got an album with pages in it. How cute are these? Okay, so here's all of your recipes, and they lay nice and flat, and it's super cute. Okay, and you really want to make sure you get your spine on right, otherwise it's not going to sit right. So, okay, so let's grab our sticker sheet. I can hear my Kramer out there squawking. Now, for our front cover, you can take um, really any of these. They're extremely cute. I'm not, I'm not going to do a whole bunch, but you could, let's see here. Uh, 
I think that this homemade right here, this red, because it's a nice pop of red, would be great. Um, probably just in the corner here. Just like so. It could be nice and simple because you can write on this right here. Stamp on it, put a recipe right here. This is why I put this one right here. I don't, um, you, your embellishments need to be relatively flat. This was the other one where it's just the belief sticker and this one is popped up on phone tape. This one will be as well. I'm ignoring you. Hey Ash, I will swap you with the kit for the finished book. Oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> that's not fair. <laughs> I say yes, there's the, there's the second one. No. Everybody else is like, bummer. So I'm, gonna, I'm just backing it on cardstock because it has a sticky back to it. Plus, it'll make it stronger. I'm going to cut out. And you can put whatever embellishments on your front. I like to leave them pretty simple. And then I'll embellish the backside pages in the album. Yeah, if if you're not in the swap, these al this kind of album can be repeated with any paper. You just need the chipboard. The pages are in shop. The brads are in shop. This can be repeated with any paper for any reason. Carol had mentioned in chat that it'd be a great brag book, and it would. It would also be just a, a great little like if you go on a vacation with a girlfriend or just you know. If you have a summer vacation you guys always take, it's not, you can just put a whole bunch of four by six pictures. You don't have to print wonky sizes and big prints. Just put your favorite 16 four by six pi pictures in there and there you go. <laughs> okay, so now with it back, it's nice and stiff. So I'm going to put a piece of foam tape. If I can find my foam tape. Ouch. Oh, peanut butter jelly time. I need more foam tape, too. I want to get one of those big, gigantic rolls. That's what I need. Carol, I need a big, gigantic roll. <laughs> this is all I have left. This is it. And I'm probably just going to put it right down here in the corner when it says homemade. Okay. A little pop of color for the front. You could even take some of the hearts and put them on here. You could do that. Just a little. It says homemade and it's got the little hearts. Super cute. Super easy, super cute. Okay. Let's use a scrap piece of paper that we have. And we have a few of them. Let's use the red. We'll bring this red pattern right here from the back to the front. And we will create a little pocket here. Let's go ahead and we will make it at an inch and a half by seven and one eighth. So this is one of our straps, inch and a half. Seven and one eighth. Okay. I'm game. I need to order more score tape too. All right, so I'm going to ink this 
And then you can use your wet glue to adhere it down. I'm not going to. I'm going to use my 1 8 inch score tape. Wet glue will hold this better, so if you have wet glue, go ahead and use it. I don't have time to wait for it to dry. You could use just quick dry, but I'm not super fancy with my quick dry. Little Kramer's out there just chirping away. the tape and you can do a fancy border on there if you like. I do one on this one. I didn't. I just put a fancy sticker. Okay, I'm going to line it up with the sides and the bottom of the yellow and blue gingham papers. I don't know what this plaid maybe. That was her, I was smelling. She must have just got done eating. She came in here and burped. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to look at my stickers and see. Um, I think this one says Better Together, Live a Simple Life Would Work. This one that says Homestead is very cute. And it's um, this one says Little Moments. You've got a whole bunch of options that would fit on here, but I'm going to go ahead and take this Homestead ink it up and just stick it on there. Okay, and I grab my tweezers. These things are horrible. I need to find my other ones. And where's my ruler? It's not right. There we go. Okay. And then I'm just going to go through here and pull out little stickers and stick them on the backs of these pages. This one says live a simple life. Because I can also use these for pictures. So I'm going to stick to the outer corners and bottoms for these things. Um, in the last one, I did put stickers here, so that's an option. There's not a ton of stickers that will fit on here. There's probably a few that would work, but not enough to do every single one, I don't think. This one says, my happy. Put this one down here. So I'm just going to go through and stick little stickers on the back sides of these, because again, this is how I'm doing mine. Well, there probably was enough, I guess, but. This one is going to be banner esque. This one says love and family. Like that one. Hi, Allie. Um, let's do homegrown and so sweet will be some. Put that one there. Let's put this one over here. Oh, and I'll cut a piece of paper to put in here. 
Um, let's see here. Let's put the best in class sticker right here. Saver tag. It's adorable. I've got one. Let's put one here. Um, we'll put the little moments here in this corner. Okay. All right. And I have the option to make another one, so I can do that. On the back of this, um, you could put stickers back here if you like. Um, it's kind of up to you and the paper that you decide to choose if you're not using this paper particularly. Another option for the inside or the front side is this one that says home. These are banner stickers and those would look really great on the front as well. This one where it says family where life begins and love never ends. That one is adorable. That would be a great center one if you weren't using this one. I wanted to leave this, um, the possibility open to put some kind of like saying about how family life is the recipe of love or something like that. That I'll handwrite or maybe I can find some stamps that I like and stamp something here in this open spot where you can write. So let's go ahead and I'm going to put... Um, I'm going to put this word here that says love it and use some of the stickers. Just to have something right there for that first one. Um, your scraps you can take and make tags out of and put them in here or you have the ability to also put an extra recipe card in here up front. It's kind of up to you. It depends on what papers you're actually going to end up using. So let's put on our charm and that will be the end of this. So let me grab my thing. Are there any questions about how this was made? Um, I gave a pretty thorough description on how to do pretty much everything. But if you have a question, please feel free to ask it in chat right now. And I didn't put this on before because I needed my album to lay pretty. I mean, this is not going to make it bulky by any means, but I'm just going to open the jump ring and slide on my charm and then close it back up. I know you guys can't see this, but it's because I have to bring it close to me because I'm partially blind. Well, kind of. Not all the way, but kind of. Yeah. So here's our little dangle charm on the side. Here's the front. It says homemade. Now open it up. You've got um, room for all of your recipe cards and what have yous. And then you've got your little envelope pocket back here. We could put a sticker on that. Or you could put a picture here, however you like to do it. Um, and put this better, better together right here. Bye, Effie. Thanks for coming. 
So if there's not any questions, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. So for all of you guys that are watching the recording, uh, thanks for watching the recording. And for those of you guys in chat, this will be on YouTube and um, I don't know when, but it will be. She's going to move it at some point. And um, you guys can find it there. So this is our second recipe swap album. And I thank you guys for hanging out with me. And I'm uh, super glad we got the whole thing done in one sitting. Two hours, 17 minutes. Granted, I did prep a little bit, but <laughs> anyways, I'm going to stop the recording here. So thanks for hanging out with me, and we'll see you guys next time.